What? You record it? You coward. Is it about money? Is money really that important to you? I'll pay you back that measly amount of money right now. My mother-in-law shook off her son and took out $10,000 from the dresser, throwing it at me. Just let me use the money however I want. I can't go gambling now that you're staying at home all day. I was overwhelmed by her force, but my sister-in-law managed to subdue her. I'm sorry for doubting you, Paula. Let me take responsibility for this mess myself. My name is Paula. I met my husband Titus when we were both in college. I remember him coming up to me and saying he had fallen in love at first sight. I had also fallen for him at first sight, but I was too embarrassed to say so and kept my feelings to myself. I was drawn to his ability to express his emotions so openly as I tended to hold back in social situations. So when he proposed to me, I was overjoyed and said yes on the spot. Now, our life as a married couple is very happy, but there is one thing that troubles me. My mother-in-law. My husband hardly ever goes back to his parents' house since his father passed away, so we only see her a few times a year. But two weeks ago, she got injured and is now temporarily living with us. Paula, I'm sorry for causing you trouble. At first, I thought she was a calm person, but problems arose shortly after we started living together. Paula, I need to talk to you. When I came home that day, my mother-in-law had a serious expression on her face. What's wrong? Are you okay? Well, my mother-in-law told me that she had debts and caught up in a scam. Oh, I think you should talk to Titus about it. No, that's absolutely not allowed. Why not? Actually, according to my mother-in-law, she was scammed in the past. And at that time, she was blamed by her husband and son. Can I ask what the contents of the scam were? Oh, well, a person claiming to be my son called and said that he had hit a luxury car with his bicycle and was being asked for money. But at that time, I couldn't bother my husband and thought it would be easier to settle it with money if possible. I see. But how old was Titus at that time? I think he was in high school. Wait. She mistook her own sons for whom she sees every day? I was so frustrated at that time. Not just about Titus, but also about my husband's work. I couldn't just stand there and do nothing. Besides, if this incident also caused trouble for Titus, I still can't say anything. Was Titus's name brought up again this time? S sort of. He didn't claim to be Titus, but he said he was being charged with adultery and was being asked for compensation. That's why I couldn't tell you at the time. My husband wouldn't cheat. That's impossible. I trust him. There's no way he could do something like that unless he was serious about someone else. And he would definitely tell me everything without hiding anything. Um... Did you borrow that money by taking out a loan? Yes, but I'm not working. So borrowing $30,000 was the most I could do. I felt a chill down my spine hearing that. Where did you borrow the money from? Could it be from a loan shark? That's a bigger problem than being scammed. I think we should tell Titus right away. The reason I'm so worried is that my husband is a police officer. If he finds out that a family member got involved with a loan shark, Titus's career could be ruined. Don't worry, I'm not that stupid. I just borrowed from a friend, so it's okay. Oh, I see. So, the reason you were telling me about this... Well, I was wondering if you could lend me some money. You see, I'll receive my pension in a month. 
so I can pay you back then. Please, keep this from Titus. I promise to pay you back. I couldn't refuse my trembling mother-in-law. I would never fall for such a scam. But there are many people like my mother-in-law who have been victimized. They are the kind of people who were honest and always think of helping others first. And my mother-in-law is probably one of those kind-hearted people too. I understand. There, let's return everything at once. I won't tell Titus about this. But please, be careful from now on. If you receive another call like that, please contact me first. Thank you so much, Paula. But for this payment, $10,000 is enough, you know? Because if we suddenly pay the full amount, she might think that I had the money all along. I want to handle this properly, since we will continue to have a relationship with her. Oh, is that so? So, could you lend me $10,000 for now? Oh, okay. I thought I didn't really understand what my mother-in-law was trying to say. But as long as her debt was paid off, there wouldn't be any problem. At that time, I considered my mother-in-law's feelings and couldn't tell my husband about it. A while after this secret conversation, I became a full-time teleworker. But this change in my daily life revealed my mother-in-law's true nature. Paula, are you off work today? No. I'm working from home starting today. Is that so? Don't worry. I will work in my room and prepare my own lunch. Please use your time as usual. Really? Thank you. Although I tried my best, my mother-in-law's face was still cloudy. It was understandable since I was going to be at home all day, which was a change from my mother-in-law's usual routine. However, I was too busy to leave my room except for using the bathroom and eating lunch. I thought that my mother-in-law would eventually get used to this situation. During my lunch break, I went downstairs to go to the nearby deli. Do you need anything from the deli? Hi Paula, long time no see. My sister-in-law Jenna was in the living room and I opened the door to greet her. Hi Jenna, how have you been? I'm going to the deli. Do you want me to get you something? No, thanks. Okay. Mother, do you want anything? Oh, then can you please get me some coffee? Sure, I got it. I met my sister-in-law for the first time in several months. It's wonderful to see how close they are as a family. However, since then, my sister-in-law has been visiting her parents-in-law's house most every day. If she can come and check on her mother-in-law every day, isn't it necessary for us to live together, even if it's for a limited time? I'm beginning to wonder if there is any meaning to our cohabitation. Hey, Titus, about your sister? That day, I told my husband about Jenna. Huh? She comes here every day? Yeah, she sure does. Then, what's the point of us living together? You think so too, right? Yeah, I mean, mom is surprisingly energetic. Yeah. And besides, it seems like she can't relax since I started remote working. It's not like anything bad is happening, but I feel bad making her worry about me staying all day. So I've been going to the deli to buy lunch every time. And I even ask them if they want anything. Paula, are you getting paid for that? Huh? No, I'm not. I never asked. Well, we should charge them for it. Your mother is paying off debt. I can't accept money from her like that. When I fell silent, my husband headed to his mother's room. Mom! What? Don't startle me like that. Don't take advantage of Paula. What are you talking about? I shook my head vigorously behind my husband towards my mother-in-law. If you want us to do the shopping, please pay us properly. No, no, Titus, it's me. I went to the deli without asking. 
doing things like that without proper communication is not good. Let's establish clear boundaries for these things. Mom, do you understand? It, yes. Also, I heard that Jenna comes here every day. Titus continued. It felt like I'm tattling on my husband. But please think about how it affects me to see her every day. Even though I love my husband's straightforwardness. If Jenna can come here every day, then what's the point of us living here? She just, she just come by to check on me, but always leave quickly. You're lying. I can hear that conversation through the wall. Anyway, if Jenna can make time to visit so often, we need to sit down and talk. How about this weekend? The next day, as I was about to take off to grab some lunch, my sister in law stopped me. Paula, I have something to tell you. Yes? You buy lunch at the deli every day, don't you? Um, yeah, I do. That's unfair, isn't it? Hey, Jenna, stop it. Mom, you can't say it, so I'll say it. Paula, that money belongs to my mother, doesn't it? You're unbelievable. Excuse me? I was hit with words I never imagined from my sister-in-law. Is this money my mother-in-law's? What is she saying? Um, all the money I used to buy lunch is for my own earnings. What are you saying? Paula, you've been cooped up in your room all day, doing nothing, right? Huh? That's not true. I'm actually a full-time employee, you know? My job can be done with just a computer. So I became a remote worker. Wait a sec. Let me bring my laptop. Here. This is how I work. I'm just currently on lunch break. And I do work every day, you know? My sister-in-law stares at the laptop screen. Mom, what's going on? No, that's what I wanted to ask. E enough already. Paula. Don't drag my daughter into your lies. Huh? I'll tell you straight today. You've reached your limit. Get out of this house right now. I'll forget the money I lent you. You won't be able to pay it back anyway, will you? Huh? But I am the one who lent you the money. Wait, what's going on? Paula, you got scammed, right? Oh, I see. That's when I realized that I had been deceived by my mother-in-law. Okay, I understand. I will leave. I'll be out by the weekend. Anyway, my lunch break is over, so I'll excuse myself now. After that, I lived without seeing my mother-in-law, or rather, she seemed awkward and avoided me. I only told my husband that we were moving. He was curious about what happened, but he understood when I said I would tell him everything after it was all over. On the day of the move, my sister-in-law appeared. Paula, I'm just worried. Did I do something disrespectful to you? What? What's going on? You're on this too, Jenna? Tell me what's going on. Well, never mind. We finished packing. So it doesn't matter anymore. I told them both the truth calmly. What? I heard the same thing from my mom. But Paula, you were the victim in her story. I heard that she was scammed twice, but she asked me to keep it secret from you, Titus. How much money did you give my mother? I gave her $10,000. And I was planning to give her the remaining $20,000 next month. What? Oh no. Could she be? My sister-in-law rushed to my mother-in-law's room. Are you still gambling, mom? What? Why are you suddenly asking me that? I'm not gambling. Then what about the story that you lent money to Paula? You said it yourself, mom. Did I say that? I've been forgetting things a lot lately, you know? Maybe I should go to the hospital. 
Jenna and my husband are giving their mother cold looks. You borrowed money from me, remember? Did I? I don't remember. I really think I'm sick. You know what they say? Multiple personality disorder. It was on TV the other day. I see. Well, maybe if you listen to this, you'll remember. I took out my cell phone. What's that? Mother, our conversation from that time is recorded on this. $10,000 is a lot of money, so I recorded it just in case. I'll play it for you now, so please listen carefully. Before I could finish my sentence, my mother-in-law jumped up and lunged for my phone. But my husband restrained her before she could reach it. As expected of a police officer, his movements were quick. How dare you record me! You coward! Is it about money? Is money really that important? Here, take this damn money! My mother-in-law shook off her son and took out $10,000 from the dresser, throwing it at me. I can't go gambling now that you're staying at home all day. I was overwhelmed by her force, but my sister in no managed to subdue her. I'm sorry for doubting you, Paula. Let me take responsibility for this mess myself. Before I could answer, my sister in law took action. You idiot! You went and wasted the money you borrowed from someone. What? Where did my sweet sister-in-law go? I looked at my husband in surprise. He said, Well, in my family, dad and that sister of mine were rulers. <laughs> no, that doesn't make any sense too. Pick up the money and return it to Polar in person. You idiot. Trembling, my mother-in-law collected the scattered bills as my sister-in-law urged her on. Here, please take this, Paula. All $10,000 have been collected. Please accept my deepest apology, Paula. I'm sorry. I will make sure to educate her properly so that this does not happen again in the future. After that, my husband and I never met my mother-in-law again. Sometimes, my sister-in-law would update me on her current situation. My mother-in-law began working a part-time job due to my sister-in-law's strict education. My sister-in-law's family had moved in with my mother-in-law, and they were still keeping an eye on things. Is your sister some kind of gang boss or something? Once things had settled down, I asked my husband. <laughs> no, she's not. But her imposing manner made me think she was. That was just her way of setting things straight with you. Oh, I see. But I'm glad that Jenna's misunderstanding of me has been cleared up. She hates dishonesty, you know. Actually, she wanted to become a police officer like Dad and me. But she had an accident when she was young, and her eye was injured. That's why she couldn't become a police officer. I see. But now, she has found fulfillment in getting back mom on the right track. By the way, Paula, you've learned your lesson this time, right? Oh, I'm sorry. We shouldn't keep secrets from each other as a couple, right? If you had told me about this, things wouldn't have ended up like this. Yes, I know what you mean, huh? But you are smart. You recorded the conversation. Oh, about that? Actually, I didn't. Huh, so luck was on your side, huh? By the way, Jenna's crackdown was super entertaining. <laughs> yeah, right? I wish I had recorded it. <laughs> we laughed while remembering the events of that day. If we learned something from this horrible experience, it is not to keep secret from each other. I have promised myself that from now on, I will consult my husband about everything. How cruel, Molly. 
What did I ever do to you? We don't need you anymore. I'm going to live here with my mom, so pack your stuff and get out. My mother-in-law and husband interrupted me and said that. They didn't even want to listen to what I had to say. I felt myself falling out of love. I'm Molly, 27 years old. I've been married to my husband Ryan for a year and a half. He can be a bit indecisive, but I thought that someone less aggressive would be better to spend every day with. So I decided to marry him. We both work, but we've managed to cooperate and get along well. That's when the incident happened, right after the new year. The signal for the start of the incident was the intercom ringing at 7 a.m. on Sunday. As a working couple, we were still dreaming at 7 a.m. on Sundays. From the fatigue of weekdays, it takes more than a little to wake up. In the end, we lost the persistent intercom ringing over and over again. Hello? Who is this? I looked at the monitor with sleepy eyes and a raspy morning voice. My mother-in-law, Christine, was standing there. Molly, why are you making me wait like this? Whoa. What? Are you okay, Christine? Her wailing voice echoed through the early morning. I was shocked and woke up my husband. Hastening half-asleep Ryan, we both opened the front door still in our pajamas. Mom, what's going on? Come in here so early in the morning. Ryan, help me please. I've been kicked out. She cried even louder as she said this. All right, all right. Come on in. Once inside, she sat in the middle of the three-seater sofa. What happened, Mom? Did you get into a fight with Emily? I didn't get into any fight. Emily just kicked me out. Emily is the wife of my husband's older brother. Christine has been living with the eldest son and his wife. Pretending to prepare coffee for the three of us, I took refuge in the kitchen. She was kicked out of the eldest son's house? What the? While waiting for the water to boil, I strained my ears to listen. I've been told all along that I'm the reason the utility bills are high or that they don't like the seasoning of the meals. Isn't that terrible? Man, she's got so much energy in the morning. There's no hesitation in her litany of complaints. I let out a big sigh. My relationship with her isn't actually very good. We just don't click. If I choose right, she chooses left. If I say something is good, she says it's bad. That's how it feels in every aspect. She had already been living with the eldest son and his wife when Ryan and I got married. So I was relieved that I would never have to live with her. But this was like a bolt from the blue. I never expected Christine to be kicked out and come to our house. Finally, this morning, I couldn't stand it anymore and I talked back. And then they told me to leave. I'm so sad and feel so pathetic. I don't think Emily is such an unreasonable person though. 
I wonder if that's true. Here's some coffee. Thank you, Molly. You'll be on my side too, won't you? Huh? I'm so glad. I have nowhere else to go. Please, let me stay here. What? It's precisely this aspect of Christine where she just decides things on her own that I have a hard time with. I had a tough time at our wedding because of this. She decided on the wedding cake and my dress all by herself. Don't make decisions without us. It's our wedding. Since her and my tastes are completely opposite, none of it felt right. It was a real struggle to persuade her without offending her and make changes in line with our wishes. It's a bitter memory. Even after getting married, she makes plans for things like memorial services and Christmas without consulting us or considering our plans. Thanks to her, we have to adjust our schedules, work, and go through various difficulties. I have common sense, you know. I'm not thinking of doing anything terrible like taking over your room. I'll just take a little space in Ryan's room, so don't worry. Oh, hell no! I can't see any common sense in this. And she's gonna live here? She can't just spring this up on us like this. Our home is a two-bedroom company-owned apartment. Ryan and I each have our own room. There are no rooms for her. Even if she says she'll share my husband's room, our small home will quickly become cramped. It's bound to be chaotic. Is she trying to settle in? My mother-in-law in our house? This Sunday morning is turning into a disaster. After breakfast, Christine retreated to Ryan's room. He also went to his room to listen to her story. I let out a deep sigh as I cleaned up after the three of us. First, let's hear what Emily has to say. I'll leave my husband to listen to Christine's side of the story. I need to understand the situation by putting together both sides of the story. Hey you two! I'm going out to buy groceries for lunch! I called out from the living room and Ryan and Christine popped their heads out of the door. Alright, drive safe! Be safe! Okay! Two similar faces were peeking out from the door. Ah, these two really are a parent and child with shared blood, I thought to myself again. I went shopping and stopped by the park to call my sister-in-law, Emily. I had emailed her before leaving the house, so she answered right away. Are you okay? Christine must be causing you trouble. She said as soon as she opened her mouth. Emily, are you by any chance quite upset? It's my husband who's more upset than I am. Your husband? Oh? My brother-in-law never came up in Christine's story, and he's upset? What on earth could it be? What has she told you guys? Um... I honestly told her what I had heard from Christine. Then Emily said, Aha! Uh -huh, just as I thought. 
and started talking in a serious tone. Molly, you better not believe what Christine says. Here's my sister-in-law side of the story. Before Christine and her eldest son's family started living together, they had discussed how much money each would contribute to the household every month. But that agreement was only followed for the first few months. Christine is now not contributing a single penny. My brother-in-law has repeatedly asked her to keep her promises, but she doesn't listen. At some point, Christine quit her job. And after she quit her job, she started stealing money Emily had left in the house. She stole money that was for groceries, gas, and even their children's ballet class tuition. When Emily finally confronted her, Christine played the victim. This situation had actually been going on for a long time. Ryan and I were blissfully unaware of it. Emily and her husband tried their best not to leave any money in the house. Perhaps it was a matter of pride, but Christine didn't ask them for money and managed to get by on her own savings and pension. That's where my husband comes in. A little while ago, he gave his mother some pocket money, saying he had won some money gambling. From that point on, the tide changed. Christine started praising Ryan more than his older brother. And then this morning, I've had enough of this terrible life. I'm sure Ryan would treat me much better. Christine burst into the bedroom of the eldest son and his wife saying that. And without giving them a chance to talk, she stormed out. That was before 6 a.m. today. Huh. I was puzzled. Her story was completely different from Christine's. Emily advised me out of concern. Don't make any promises or agreements with Christine. Don't believe her. Okay, I won't. I replied and hung up the phone. While shopping, I compared the stories of Christine and Emily. I didn't know what to believe. For now, I needed to talk to Ryan. I'm home! When I returned home, Christine and Ryan had moved to the living room. The two of them greeted me with smiles. We're going out to buy the things mom needs for her daily life. Molly, you can rest. We'll eat out for lunch, too. Huh? I did say I was going shopping for lunch, right? Going out to eat? Huh? And what does she mean she needs things for her daily life? Oh God, please don't tell me she's really planning on staying here for good. Well, we'll be going then. Uh-huh. Wait, hold on. Without listening to me, my husband and mother-in-law left. Unbelievable. This is unacceptable. I don't care if I'm called narrow-minded. I do not want to live with my mother-in-law. Hell no. It'd be too stressful and mentally exhausting. My life would be nothing but misery. What should I do? It doesn't seem like Christine has any intention of going back to Emily's place. My husband seems to be accepting the idea of living with his mother. I have a feeling that once Christine leaves, Emily and her husband won't chase after her. This is bad. I'm at a complete disadvantage. 
what a shitty life. As I lamented and rolled around on my bed, I suddenly felt something was off. My makeup tools seemed to have been moved. Did Christine use them? If she was going to use them, she should have asked. I mean, I don't even want her entering my room without permission. There's no proof yet that she entered the room and used the cosmetics. But I felt disgusted. I might be overly sensitive after hearing Emily's story. But there's definitely a sense of unease. I felt anxious and searched the room. Closet, bookshelf, trinket box. Ah! I inadvertently let out a sound. Out of the $300 I had in the drawer, $100 was gone. This money was supposed to be deposited in the bank tomorrow. There should definitely be $300, but only $200 is here. You must be joking. Emily's credibility increases. With the information from Emily and the missing $100, I could clearly picture Christine taking my money in my mind. I felt a sense of crisis. I can't stand getting involved in money problems on top of not getting along with her. This can't go on. There's no way I can live with her. She and my husband came back at 9 p.m. I was finally able to talk to him when Christine went to take a bath. Hey, what are we going to do about your mother from now on? She's going to live here. I don't want that. I can't live together with her. What? What's that supposed to mean? It means I don't want to live with her. You're cold, you know. She was kicked out from my brother's place. Well, it seems like she wasn't kicked out. Emily told me that she left on her own. Even so, we can't kick out my mom with nowhere to go. It doesn't have to be right away, but she could rent an apartment or something, and once it's ready, she could live there, right? You know she and I don't get along, right? That's just because you're completely dismissing her feelings. You used to complain about how difficult she is, too. Did I? I forgot. But come on, living together is no big deal, right? She says she'll pay us her living expenses. I can't trust that verbal promise. How cruel. How cruel, Molly. What did I ever do to you? Huh? A shrill scream echoed from behind me. It turned out Christine had come out of the bath and was in the living room. It hadn't even been five minutes. Her bath was apparently just a quick dip. You thought of me like that? I can't leave my precious son to someone like you. Divorce him. Excuse me? Whoa, that came out of nowhere. My son is wonderful. He takes care of his mother, understands my feelings, and is kind. He's much more capable than his older brother. It's a shame he's the second son. I can't give such a good boy to someone like you with a twisted personality. Divorce him. I'll live with my son. Get out. 
Christine ranted, but her face seemed to be smiling somewhere. This is strange. Why are you smiling like that, Christine? Huh? That was a really quick bath. Weren't you waiting outside the room for me to say something wrong? Your hair is dry even though there is no sound of a hair dryer. What? That's not true. How rude. She was clearly flustered. Ryan was looking away, avoiding eye contact with me. How easy to read. The two of them were conspiring to kick me out. I could feel the blood rushing to my head. Who's the cruel one here? Ryan, what's going on? Huh? Me? Who else? Well, I, um... He looked back and forth between me and his mother. My eyes were narrowed in anger while Christine had a creepy grin on her face. Ryan, it's okay. Just say it. She urged him. Then he nodded and suddenly spoke up clearly. I, I, I'd rather live with my mom than with you. You're the one who should leave. Pack your things and get out right now. Excuse me? He was taken aback for a moment by the force of my voice. See? My son says he can't live with you either. Molly, you're the fifth wheel. Christine pointed her finger at me as if she was blaming me for everything. Yeah, that's right. My husband chimed in, waving his arm. What the... He was scared just a while ago. I never got along with my mother-in-law in the first place, but today, just now, my love for my husband disappeared completely. Not a single piece remained. What's with this jerk? He doesn't listen to a single word his wife says and just does whatever his mother tells him. It's infuriating. Just unforgivable. Fine. Divorce it is. Huh? D divorce Molly, at least in the end you get it. Very nice. I'm very happy for you, Ryan. Uh-huh? What? What do you mean, what? And who the F is she to judge me as very nice? I don't need alimony. I'll take all the furniture and appliances that I bought. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine, right, Ryan? Christine seemed very pleased. My husband's eyes were wide open, unable to follow the rapidly unfolding conversation. It's not my problem even if you two regret it later. That night, I downloaded the divorce papers from the City Hall's website and filled them out. I might have decided on the divorce in the heat of the moment. But I absolutely refuse to live a life parasitized by my mother-in-law. I don't need a husband who treats me as a nuisance just because he's manipulated. Christine volunteered to be a witness on the divorce papers. I submitted the divorce papers promptly. I quickly proceeded with the moving process too. Since turning in the divorce papers, I had not spoken a word to my husband or his mother. It felt like we were strangers who happened to be on the same train. It was uncomfortable. But I only had to endure it until I moved. 
On the day of the move, I gave instructions to the movers and had them carry my belongings out. My furniture and appliances were quickly taken away. Upon seeing this, Christine let out a surprised, what? Wait, wait a minute, Molly! Why are you removing the air conditioner? Because I bought it. Where did the TV go? The TV is mine too. So is the washing machine, vacuum cleaner, microwave, hair dryer, and so on. Before getting married, Ryan lived in a one-room apartment with furniture and appliances included. On the other hand, I lived in a regular rental apartment with my own purchased furniture. When we decided to live together after getting married, I brought most of my stuff here. We only replaced the refrigerator with a bigger one when we got married, so I'll leave that behind. And the scale, too. What are you doing? Put them back! We can't live like this! Ryan knows that most of the furniture and appliances are mine. Right, Ryan? He was dumbfounded as he watched our belongings being carried away. The movers were concerned about the exchange between Christine and me. But I asked them to proceed without worrying about it. Throughout the process, she continued to criticize and blame me. She attacked me openly and directly, grumbling from the sideline and pretending to cry while watching with disbelief together with my husband. She attacked me in various ways. It's amazing how she could showcase such a diverse repertoire in such a short time. In a way, I think it's incredible. Perhaps my brother-in-law was overwhelmed by constantly being bad-mouthed by her in a similar way. I sympathize with them. When all the work was finished, I asked Christine. By the way, have you and your son decided where you'll be moving? M m moving Yes, because this place is a company-owned apartment rented by my company. W what? She was as shocked as if a natural disaster had occurred. Company housing? From your workplace, Molly? Yes, that's right. So when I leave, the two of you can't stay here. What? I've informed my company about the divorce and given them my husband's contact information. I think you'll be hearing from the Human Resources Department soon. Well then, goodbye! I cheerfully shouted my farewell. Christine had a stunned look on her face. Ryan just nodded vaguely. My new place is a single occupancy rented company apartment. I have been living in a family type company apartment till now. Moving closer to work shortened my commute, giving me more time in the morning. I only have to do housework for one person. I can enjoy drinking alcohol however I want. Oh my god, living alone is so nice! I'm overwhelmed by the wonders of living by myself. As I enjoyed a drink after work, my phone rang. It was for my ex-husband. Feeling tipsy and in a good mood, my spirits were high. I shouldn't have answered the call, but I did. Molly, it was my fault. Please come back. As soon as I picked up the phone, my ex-husband shouted, I'm already home. No, I mean, I want you to come back here. 
Huh? Why? He's saying something ridiculous. I couldn't help but laugh. I got a call from your company's HR department. They said I could stay here as is. Well, good for you. No, it's not. The rent here is $1,900. Well, it is in a good location. It's a family apartment near the station. The rent would be about that much. Until now, there was rent assistance from my company and the remaining portion not covered by the assistance was split between my ex and me. That was the $300 I had at home. And Christine stole 100 of that. I was manipulated by my mom. She said she had nowhere to go, that only I could help her, and that she was relying on me. I got carried away by her flattery and tried to protect her, so I ended up being harsh on you, Molly. I didn't really want to divorce. Oh, I see. But we're already divorced, aren't we? Too late. Besides, I can't make ends meet with just my income. I can't afford to buy appliances, pay rent, and take care of my mom. It's too late for that now. He should have known that all along. Molly, I was wrong. Please, come back. But you told me to leave, remember? Besides, there's no way I could ever be related to your mom again. Well then, goodbye. Wait, Molly, please. I turned off my phone and drank a beer. Ah, oh, this is so good. I don't need a husband who neglects his wife just because he's a little flattered. I completely forgot about my ex-husband and happily got drunk. The next morning I rushed to work in a panic. Since I had turned off my phone, the alarm didn't go off and I almost overslept. That was close. I arrived at work just before the start of the day and checked my phone at my desk. As expected, there were countless messages from my ex. I ignored them all. What I wanted to see was... Ah, there it is. An email from my sister-in-law. Yes, an email from Emily. Are you enjoying living alone? Thanks to you, our family has completed the move as well. Thank you. Great. Their move is complete, too. In fact, I had anticipated that my ex would give in, so I proposed the move to Emily and her husband. It's likely that my ex won't be able to maintain the standard of living that his mom demands. So she would return to Emily's place. Of course, they would want to avoid that. So before she shamelessly comes back, they should disappear. I proposed this idea when I asked them to be witnesses for the divorce papers. Emily and her husband had several discussions and decided to move. I don't know where they moved to. I texted Emily. Congratulations! I'm relieved! A few months later, my ex and his mother moved out from the company housing. They had no choice but to move. Naturally, he couldn't afford the 1900 rent and maintain their lifestyle. Their new place is an old apartment far away from the station. It's in the opposite direction of my new home. Christine thought she and her son would be living in a family apartment near the station. Her expectations were shattered and she's already blaming her son. Of course, she didn't contribute the money she promised to. 
She tried to return to Emily's place once, but they had already moved. Someone else is living at their old address. She doesn't know where they went. So she returned to her son's place, grumbling and exploding with anger. Every time something happens, he contacts me and asks for help. I didn't give a shit. I enjoy being alone. Recently, I got fed up with the constant updates from my ex and changed my phone number. Now I don't have to deal with Christine either. I don't have to worry about being stuck with a weak-willed man who can't see the future and is always at his mom's beck and call. This divorce has set my life back on track. I just turned 27 this year. Even though I failed at marriage once, it doesn't hurt or bother me. There's still so much more to life.